Hello everyone, I'm Amir, Commercial Project Manager for INVI in Asia, and today we will continue to discuss about the nursery step in shrimp farming. In the first presentation of our nursery video series, we have presented the main nursery production trends and explained why we believe in the importance of having a nursery as a transition step to be successful in shrimp farming. The second episode detailed the fundamentals INVI believes in and focuses on. These main critical success factors, which are microbial management, nutrition and health, are mandatory to use successfully this transition period so that the shrimp are transferred into the grow-out ponds in an excellent general health status and to have the most profitable and sustainable grow-out production until harvest. Today we are, going to through, we are going through one of the three models called the booster model. The name speaks for itself. The main focus will be on the growth of the shrimp. So, as an introduction, we will start with the conclusion of the first presentation, which is a reminder of the three main nursery production models in Asia. We will go through the needs and benefits the booster model can answer. This will be then followed by the basic requirements needed in order to achieve these objective and potential expectations. We will go on and cover the key parameters or KPIs that are necessary for successful production. And finally, go through invest protocol guideline on this booster model that will ensure that all these KPIs are met. As you most likely remember, nurseries are found all around the world in very various setups. INVE has chosen to focus and develop three main production models or trends that have shown to ensure a very smooth transition from hatchery to grow-out and considerably lead to improve the end result at harvest in the grow-out ponds. The objective of the nurseries is not to produce 15 or 20 day old shrimp post hatchery and that's it. No, the objective is to prepare juvenile shrimp in the most controlled environment possible in order to maximize their growth, their robustness and health conditions once they are transferred to the grow and this of course until they are harvested, which is usually done in a much less controlled outdoor environment, which is full of challenges. All three models are aiming for similar end results, which are profitability and sustainability, but approaches like investments, risks, infrastructures are very different, but there is no one size fits all. So the booster model and purpose is of course profit for the farmer, but by choosing a very specific route, which requires a particular setup we're going to see in coming slides. So as mentioned earlier, the name is very straightforward. In this model, the main objective will be growth. So by growth, we mean not only how fast a shrimp can grow in time, but also by, maximize, uh, by maximizing the biomass and the total output. So as you can imagine, focus will be on feeds and our density. So all farmers' objectives are to be profitable, but not all farmers want or even can do it the same way. And they're free to choose the route that fits the best for so growth enhancement, for example, can be very good. It could be a great benefit for a farmer that has access to a slower growing uh, genetic. So he will probably push more on feeding and feed qualities to achieve uh, the extra growth he is uh, willing to have. And higher biomass in nurseries will help farmers with few amount of ponds to improve batch management and increase uh, crop rotation. So here in this picture, you can see a farm that has a, a nursery uh, which is in the, in the yellow circle and only three production ponds. And thanks to uh, this booster model, he has been able to stock in higher density and to split uh, all the shrimp we had in this, uh, in this nursery in the three ponds to have a, a shorter cycle in the ponds and have a higher rotation within the year and increase the amount of cycles he had uh, in the year. Uh, so approach will be to focus on shrimp size and biomass, despite maybe biosecurity and costs, which can be different than other models who would more focus on biosecurity and cost despite size and biomass. So it's the choice of the farmer. Our job is to accompany the farmer doing it the right way to ensure sustainability and success using these different models, such uh, as an example, uh, the, the booster model. So to ensure a successful use of this tool, several key parameters have to be taken into account, starting with infrastructure, uh, in most cases, it's preferable to have this transition period for the booster model uh, done in smaller water volumes, ranging in average from as small as three ton water up to 100 tons. Uh, this, of course, is linked to density, since you don't want to have too high densities in very large uh, water volumes. Most of the nurseries using the booster model have concrete PVC, fiberglass, or lime tanks. You will not see any nursery using the booster model who uh, has a nursery set up in earthen ponds. 
Shaded uh, productions or indoor production will also help to limit environmental changes and potential disease vectors from outside. A good aeration system is very important to reduce the biological oxygen demand, especially in high densities, but also to create the correct uh, current you want to have and keep the feed, uh, uh, the particles of feed in suspension in the water. Uh, in this example on the, on the top, uh, on the top center and uh, top right, you can see two former hatcheries who have been transformed into uh, nurseries, or so it's concrete tank, smaller, vo smaller water volumes. In this example, which is Indonesia, you can clearly see that there is extremely high aeration from the bottom up, and this will create a convection uh, current, convection flow, so that the particles really never stop moving in the environment. So the, the, the setup of uh, these aero tubes, you can see in, in this different example, in a little bit larger ponds, the example of uh, a nursery in India, where you can see that the layout of the aero tubes on the bottom of uh, the tanks. Uh, on the right side, you can see two uh, other uh, nurseries using the booster model. Here in very small three-ton tanks, where the water exchange is uh, maybe a, a little bit high compared to other models. And this example here is in Indonesia. Again, you can see that there is very strong aeration from the bottom up to the top. Typical densities in these booster models range from uh, 10 to 40 PL per liter. Uh, culture period will range from 10 to 20 days. Both parameters are, of course, linked as the carrying capacity will be the limiting factor. Uh, this was already explained in a previous video by our technical manager, uh, Manuel Poulin. So in brief, the higher the density, the shorter the cycle, and opposite, the lower the density, the longer it's possible to produce in time before reaching these carrying capacity. So you can see on the bottom uh, a table with examples of what is being done in Thailand in, uh, in nurseries using the booster model. When you stop 30 to 40 PL per liter, usually the production uh, go from five days to uh, 15 days. If you stop in a little bit lower densities, 10 to 15 PL per liter, you can see that uh, the average is pushing a little bit more up to 21 days. The one below are different uh, stocking densities and days of culture, but are not used in booster models. So really, uh, 10 to 40 PL per liter is what we see the most frequently using a booster model. And so it translates in a culture period ranging from about five days to 21 days. Transfer weight expected of the juvenile. So this is uh, regardless from the genetics. It will depend on uh, the key parameters mentioned before. So densities and water volumes will influence the days of culture and then for, and therefore the transfer, uh, transfer size. Densities alone will impact the space competition and the environment and also influence uh, the growth curve. Feeds and nutrition uh, will play a major role and uh, directly impact the growth of the shrimp. As you can imagine, the quality of the feeds, meaning the nutritional profile, the stability in water and other parameters such as feeding regime and feeding times will strongly influence the growth of the shrimp. In this model, the idea is not to feed a lot, but to feed better and feed less. So in average, thanks to this model and the key parameters, uh, we can reach about 0 0.6 gram, 0 0.7 gram in anywhere between 18 to 20 days uh, nursery production. Of course, as I mentioned before, this is an average and the genetics will strongly influence uh, these expectations. So this a question of uh, uh, knowing what you use and then having all the time uh, very similar uh, growth lines based on the different kinds of genetics you are using. So to go deeper in these uh, critical success factors, particularly the feeding phase, the more the feeding profile is complete in terms of actives and nutritional profile and the better the stability in water, the lower will be the stress of the shrimp and the environment and the better will be the shrimp metabolism and the faster it uh, will be the growth. So this will ensure a perfect transition into the grow out phase. The only way to do that is by using specific transition diets that have a very similar profile to the ones used in hatchery, such as free pet raceway. These uh, specific transition diets need to have highly concentrated and digestible proteins with the most complete nutritional values to maximize growth as well as returns of investment. In terms of uh, feeding management, also quite important is to be as close as what is done in, uh, in hatcheries to, to, to really ensure a total smooth transition from hatchery to grow out. 
And this by increasing as much as possible the amount of feeding times per day. So six times per day is really a minimum and can really help in successfully boosting uh, the growth of the metabolism industry. Of course, this can have, can have an impact on the water management uh, and the water quality as the higher the density is, the higher it feeds. Of course, you are using very high quality feeds, so you usually have much higher protein levels and this will automatically result in a higher nitrogen uh, um, quantities in the environment. So this needs to be supported, balanced, and controlled thanks to microorganism communities. And for this, we add uh, bacillus in the environment with a minimum concentration of 1,000 CFU per ml. The application of these probiotics have to be done almost on a daily basis, and of course, after water exchange. Uh, probiotics such as ProW with concentrations which are 5, 10 times uh, 10 power 10 CFU per gram, uh, specifically designed for this kind of purpose. So usually in these models, there's something else, which is the water exchange, which most of the time are a little bit higher. Uh, if you need higher water exchange, you need to have infrastructures that allow you to have enough stock of water. But more importantly, you will need to disinfect the water to be sure that it's free from any pathogens. So an extra effort on biosecurity is part of this uh, uh, booster model and is necessary uh, to do. So if we resume the booster model um, and uh, target improved growth and or higher biomass during the nursery phase, the key point will be to focus on high uh, quality diets and very complete transition diets. Ensure that uh, the infrastructure is allowed to have higher water exchanges if necessary and therefore increased biosecurity by having a controlled disinfection system. And of course, the more you close your farm, the more it's indoor, the more the setup is close to an indoor, the better is it, it is to limit uh, uh, bringing in vectors for pathogens from outside of the nursery. Understanding that investment can be a little bit higher than in other models is very important. And the main reason is because of these two previously mentioned factors, which are higher quality diets, uh, maybe a higher biosecurity and higher water exchange, but it will pay off at the harvest. And you will see in a following episode of our, uh, of our nursery uh, uh, videos, uh, our colleague from Thailand will present the result from a farm following this protocol, the booster protocol since a couple of years. And you will see the results not only in zoo technical performance, but also the financial returns of investment. So in the meantime, uh, please see this small clip of a juvenile shrimp eye angle. Uh, which shows what life looks like in the booster model in the nursery. You can see here, this is a nursery that is uh, about uh, the size of a little bit lower than 100 ton, and you can see that the shrimp are very crowded uh, in this environment. You can clearly see that the hepatopancreas and the intestine is uh, full. This is thanks to the use of very high quality uh, diets. The water also, you can see that the current is pretty strong pretty clean for such a very intensive uh, density in the nursery. So to conclude, this is INVE's uh, protocol guideline for this nursery booster model. A transition diet, as mentioned, play a major role in this protocol and have to be added from the beginning. So as shown here, free pack uh, a raceway can be added either as a complete uh, diet, complete feed, or as a transition, as a replacement uh, transition diet. So it goes up 100% complete diet to 50% replacement for the first 10 days. And depending on the investment capacities or the duration of the nursery, you can continue after uh, DOC 10 with 30% uh, uh, replacement, of course. The more is given, the better the result. And according to the experience of the farmer, uh, a quick balance will be found to maximize returns of investment. We also recommend the use of ESPEC to boost uh, immunity as well as uh, um, control the water quality with 1000 CFU per ml with a minimum of three times uh, per week. Better it's to use every day afterward exchange with a ProW bacillus bacteria. Uh, some other products are added, but Raceway and ProW really are mandatory to reach the wanted growth boosting effect and maintaining the best possible environment. So I hope this booster model has, uh, uh, will, will motivate you to, to, um, to think about uh, doing it the same way. 
please feel free to contact our technical team and uh, there are more videos to come with the two other models, the nursing model and the PGO models that will come soon. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon.